Busyness can either be exhausting or a blessing. In this episode, we talk about seasons of busyness in our own lives, the root issues of busyness, and how obedience can lead to a full tank. Thanks for listening. Welcome to the Olive Shoots Family Podcast, where we talk about family and parenting, homesteading, and the things God is leading us towards. I'm Nathan. And I'm Brittany. We've been married for three years, have one little boy, and just got our first piece of land where we plan to build and start our homestead. We are passionate about the family unit and getting back to the basics of the way God created us to live. We have big dreams and are learning what it looks like to pursue those dreams while first trusting God's leading. Thank you so much for joining us on this journey. Busyness is something that is celebrated in our culture. I think it's like really normal for people to say, to ask how we've been or how, or for us to say, how have you been to somebody else? And the answer is, oh, I've been good, really busy. Seems like hardly have time to breathe or something like that. And it's like, that's the right thing to say. If you don't say you've been busy, then it feels like you're not saying the right thing. Yeah. Yeah. We, we just recently uh, spent the weekend with some friends and I just, in preparation for this episode, like it was on my mind and I was, you know, I was pretty intentional about, okay, don't have my response be, you know, we've been pretty busy lately, but just listening to that, knowing that that was on my mind, it was like four or five, six people who, when we were asking how they've been, uh, it was just oh, really busy. How busy have you been these days? And just going back and forth of just celebrating that And that comparing busyness. busyness. Yeah. I think we've had, I mean, we're in a season of busyness, but we've had seasons of being extra, extra busy and then also being extra exhausted all the time Mm -hmm. and just, um, I don't know, feeling drained like before the day's even over, but then even more drained at the end of the day Mm -hmm. and it never being able to feel like we're catching up. Like it's just that exhaustion. We're always behind. We look at the calendar and there's never an empty day or I don't know I think that's we're not in that season right this second but we've definitely been in that season at the beginning of our marriage I think Mm -hmm. yeah and we've we've seen we've seen this in other families too just throughout ministry and and throughout just church life of just um, seeing other families who have something every night of the week whether that's going to two or three or four different sports events or um, things like that just throughout the week and just not having those moments as a family where maybe they sit down and share a meal or or just um, weekends being full. And so they are at church maybe once or twice a month just because there's things going on that they have to go to and that they've committed themselves to and, and just things like that. So that 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 time as a family is more shifted towards um, maybe being a part of things that the kids are involved in or um, or maybe even going your separate ways and doing your own thing and and not really having that time together throughout the week Um, just that 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 busyness of things happening um, don't don't lend towards the family being together i remember when you were um a family pastor we just had so many conversations we didn't even have emerson yet and so we were like we have feel like we have no experience or room to talk and we also totally understand the busyness because we were the teens more recently Mm -hmm. it's like we knew it from the teen perspective more than the parent perspective but just like how do we just the conversations we would have of like how do we get it across or how do we have a conversation with parents that are in the middle of this that um don't realize that the damp or maybe not the damage but the danger of it mm-hmm. um and and don't realize the things they're missing until it's too late almost yeah. but then also being like well we're not in the middle of this so how do we speak to this um and obviously we're still not in the middle of it but I think that it doesn't just affect the kids, like it affects the whole family whenever you're yeah. just in that constant state of feeling like you never have a break. Yeah, and I think that, um, you know, it, it's not 
it's not hard. It's not missed on any one of us that this is the culture that we live in, that America, American culture is driven by success, by um, wealth and status, uh, by climbing whatever ladder is most important to you and being and being so busy um always doing always going always pushing to the next thing so that you can achieve whatever goal it is that you want to achieve and so we can see this in our in our culture we can see uh just especially in our kids life if you have older kids of just how many things are pushed on them to be involved in i mean If they're involved in one sport and um, and an academic AP class or or something like that, just those two things alone, like those are big time commitments throughout the week. And, And especially now where maybe you have practice every day after school with a game once a night of the week and maybe a tournament on the weekend, like those are big time commitments. And so just trying to balance all of that. And then um, when you add in multiple kids, it's like absolutely. you think about it, you're like, well, this kid only does two things and this kid only does two things, but they're not the same thing. So it's really four things or six things or however many kids you have. Or it's three things in the winter and six things in the summer and whatever in this, like there's never a break. It's like you go from one sport ending to another activity starting to two more starting mm-hmm. and... It's just that, and then you're back to the activity that's in the fall, and it's just that continual yeah. cycle of what it, and they're not bad things, like sports aren't bad, academic, obviously, achievements are not bad, Yeah, being involved in a whole bunch of things as a family is not bad in and of itself, but I think it's just the overwhelming busyness of it can be dangerous. And I think because it's so prevalent that if we're not careful, because it is the standard of our culture and society, it will become the standard of our homes if if we just go with what comes naturally, with what with what is normal within our culture, and um, and as as families that are called to be set apart, that are called to be different, that are called to go counter. To what our culture, the, the direction that our, our culture is going, then it's going to take a lot of effort and it's going to take a lot of intentionality and heart to tackle the issue of busyness for for busyness sake or, or even busyness for good, for goodness sake. But maybe not the best. But maybe not God's calling, yeah. maybe not God's direction. And I think we have to, like, learn to be okay with not, like like you just said, if, if we're supposed to be counterculture, we're not supposed to look like everybody else, and busyness is, is celebrated, then we have to be okay with not <laughs> doing that, with not falling into mm-hmm. that, and, and knowing, like, people might judge people might think that we're just being lazy when really that's not the case it's Mm. that we're being intentional yeah like people might be like why do you say no i don't feel like i can ever say no it's like well i'm not saying no because i'm lazy i'm saying no because we're making intentional family time and we said we were eating dinner as a family tonight or and not that you don't ever or something else yeah or whatever yeah. yeah so i think you have to be okay with the possible misconceptions of what why you're saying no or why you choose to not be so busy Mm -hmm. um because but but like you said we're not supposed to look like them so yeah in every aspect it's something we have to battle and so i think when we when we find ourselves when we catch ourselves where we have those moments of just (sighs) <sighs> okay, we can breathe now. We we've made it. We can we can take a moment and pause. Just finding ourselves being overwhelmed um, in the middle of that that we need we need to stop and we need to just um, have that heart check. Have that um, just question of 
Lord, what are you what are you trying to show me? I'm feeling overwhelmed by everything that's going on in our lives. Now what? What do you want for me? Chasing a toddler around, maintaining the home, and starting homestead projects keeps us busy. We try our best to make healthy decisions when it comes to what we eat, but the reality is we don't eat as much fruits and vegetables in a day as we should. That's why I'm so thankful for Juice Plus capsules and have been taking them for four years now. They help bridge the gap, adding what's missing from my diet with whole food nutrition. These capsules are sourced from the purest ingredients, the highest quality fresh fruits, vegetables, berries, grains, and oils. Some of the benefits I notice is I get sick less often, I have more energy, and I know I'm supporting my gut health and my immune system. I'm so thankful for this product, knowing I'm getting more of the nutrients I need on a daily basis in the midst of the busyness. If this sounds like something you'd be interested in, I'd love to tell you more about it. Email me at brittany at oliveshoots.co, and you can also check out the products and find out more info by clicking the link in the show notes. Yeah, and I think one of the first questions to kind of ask is just to get to the root of your business and kind of ask yourself, what's the reason behind all the business? Like deep down, what what's the root of it? Is it is it that we maybe struggle to tell people no? Um, we feel like we always have to say yes or we feel like we always have to be busy just because it's what you're supposed to do? Or maybe once you have kids, I know as they get older I'm sure the temptation becomes of like you want them to be involved in stuff you maybe you want your kids to be the best at something so that means they need to be doing all the extra travel teams and all the extra practices and all that stuff or you just want to be involved in as many things as possible like some of those things aren't really bad things at all they're just maybe like trying to figure out what's the root of of your busyness. Mm -hmm. I think even maybe one of them could be that we, in, in, in the church, we say things like to be a servant, to be a servant leader. And that's a good thing to do. That's a good thing to aspire to. But I think the unhealthy dynamic of that is when you aspire to be a servant so much so that 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 becomes your goal rather than serving Jesus rather than serving the church, rather than serving the person, you want the title of servant. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we would ever say that, but we want to be known as a servant, maybe more so than we want to um, humbly and unrecognizably serve those around us. And maybe it's just because you don't even want to be recognized as a servant, but you just you want people to know who you are. You want to be known in your community. You want to be known as someone who gives back to other people, who is someone who can be um, counted on at the last minute to show up for a fundraiser or for an event or something like that. And the thing is that all of those things are not inherently bad. All of those things, for, for the most part, are, are good things. They come from a good place of, of wanting to do, wanting to work, wanting to give back to your community, wanting to be someone who can be counted on and is accountable to showing up and, and volunteering your time and serving others and being someone who, who wants to celebrate their kids and recognize the gifts that your kids have. And and not wanting to to hurt others or disappoint others. And th those are good things in and of themselves. But I think when we start to feel that busyness and we ask ourselves, okay, why are we feeling this? What is the root of this? I think we're what we're getting at here is is saying is saying that have I taken something that is good and it has began it has begun to shift and become something draining rather than 
God given and God called. Yeah. Yeah. And I think after we establish that, what's the root of it? The next question is, is, is all the busyness is the things that's consuming my time. Are they leading my family in the way that I want it to go? And maybe the answer is 100% yes, and you're still feeling drained. Or maybe it's not exactly like I maybe like we just talked about the thing that the the root cause of it is not bad. The root is that you are wanting to serve, but the the extent of serving and the extent of busyness isn't the way that you want your family to go. And just processing that through the lens of like knowing that you only have X amount of weekends left before your kids leave the house or before they turn 18. I guess we don't actually know for sure when they're going to leave the house. But I mean, I think it's, we looked it up like 936 weeks is how many weeks we have from birth till they turn 18. Right. Which seems so low yeah, seems in, that so context, low. in that context. And so 936 weekends or 930, like whatever, 936 Wednesdays, however you want to, like that's the number you have for the time that you have the biggest influence of your kid on your kids. Um, well, you should have the biggest influence on your kids. Or you have X amount of opportunities for family dinners left. Or even further than that, like, the busyness and the lifestyle that you've created for your family now is that something you would want for your kids when they are parents raising your grandkids like do you want them to be so busy that they hardly have time to come see you or I don't know it's just those perspective type questions Mm -hmm. of maybe you're not doing anything wrong maybe when we were in that season we weren't doing anything wrong but then when we step back it's like well, we don't really, this isn't the example that we necessarily want to set. We don't want Emerson to think that he has to be busy because he can never tell somebody no when they need help. Or, I don't know. Yeah, it's just setting up, it's setting up the the long term rather than, you know, the far reaching long term of how do I want my kids to parent how do I want my kids to lead and 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 how you're shaping that and how you're influencing that in the now and I think again busyness in and of itself it's not a bad thing we're not saying clear your schedule have an hour to three hours set aside every day where you don't have anything put on the calendar so that in case something comes up you can do it we're not saying that we're, we're, busyness in and of itself is not bad, but when you when you don't have time at, at ever or at all to sit down at at the table as a family, or you don't have time to honestly to do something that you feel like God is calling you to do, or you don't feel like you have enough time to invest in your children spiritually or listen to them and get to to know their heart and get to know what's going on in their lives in the moment that that can be a scary place to be in and I think for us personally we have found ourselves in those in those seasons of busyness where we're just drained where we are maybe doing things that are not bad they're just maybe not what God is directing us towards and and so we're almost like spinning our wheels in some way. But I don't know. Lately, we've just been finding ourselves in, in maybe even in some ways busier than what we had been before. But it doesn't feel like it. It doesn't feel like it. We feel full and we feel like there's an abundance of of blessing. There's an abundance of um doesn't always feel like it, but an abundance of energy. We're just like, even though we're doing a lot, we have the the capacity to do it. And maybe we didn't always feel that way before. Yeah, I think um, one thing before, and I mean, in the season that we were drained was just, it was a lot of, I don't know, maybe work, like the serving and the helping was kind of more work-minded or more I have to do this because I'm a Christian or because it's just 
what we're supposed to do, but it wasn't things that necessarily was exactly what God might have had for us, and they weren't like centered around community. And I think that's a big difference right now is a lot of the things we're busy with now are centered around community, and and it's we're doing things that are filling up our tank instead of exhausting us and wearing mm-hmm. us out at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. So we might have something three nights a week every single week, but those those two of those every week are our circle groups, one our age and one that we're doing on with the age group under us. So it's just like that community atmosphere and, and being mm-hmm. with like-minded believers and then even serving together with those same people and it's like I said and then the other times I think we find ourselves busy is intentional family time and so it's it's when we look at our calendar like we're not saying we're not ever busy anymore because when we look at our calendar we're like well we have one weekend in this month and one weekend in this month that we're not doing anything um but like I said, our our busyness right now is really centered around community, um, being intentional with our family, and and serving our church. And then when we have extra time, it's taking those steps to pursue our dreams with our land or our homestead. And so I think pretty much most all of our business right now, we can honestly say, is lines up with our with our mission and our our family mission and our family mm-hmm. values. Not that it's a hundred percent, but for the most part, I would even go further than just say it, it than just saying it lines up with our, our values. It it drives us towards what our family mission is, yeah. and when we think about um, where we want to be in ten years, in thirty, forty, fifty years for our family, that the things that that keep us busy right now that fill up our calendar that that take time out of our days and weeks and months. Um, and, and honestly, the things that take time where we have to say no to other things because we, we're we not willing to sacrifice this, this area of busyness, this area of events, this area of whatever it is mm-hmm. that's going on. We're not willing to sacrifice those things because it's driving us towards what our 50-year vision for our family looks like. And, and that's what I think that's what helps to make it so fulfilling rather than just draining is that the work we're, we're putting in, that the time we're spending right now, we know there's a payoff in the future. And we know that it's not just a payoff in the future of, um, of, of excellence or, um, uh, you know, of, of work or of wealth or of any other thing that maybe our culture drives towards. But it's something that God is calling us towards. And when we sat down, and, and we've had episodes about this, go back and listen to them if you're interested. But when when we sat down and just thought about what our family mission was going to be, and, and we we prayed about and, and listened, <clears throat> listened to what God was leading us towards, that we, we now have a goal. And, and just like what um, Jared Lopes was talking about, in our interview with him just last week, um, that there's an end goal in mind. And and I think the busyness, to use his analogy, the busyness that we're experiencing now is us driving on the interstate going to Disneyland rather than veering off and getting distracted by the billboards, by the museums, by the other things that are going on. And that analogy will make complete sense if you listen to last <laughs> yeah. week. If not, go back and listen to it because it was really good. When I found out about all the harmful ingredients in deodorant, I began searching for a natural alternative free of metals. The problem was that although healthier, they didn't do much to cover up my stink. I tried several brands but ultimately switched back to my older deodorant because I didn't want to smell bad. So I decided to give one more chance to natural deodorant after discovering Earthly's mineral deodorant and detoxifying pit mask. The pit mask helps to detox your underarms of metals and chemicals that are often found in store-bought deodorants, 
and the mineral deodorant is made with clean ingredients that nourish your skin and reduce odor. This combination truly has worked for me and has made me feel much better about what I am putting on my skin. Earthly is a family-owned, made-in-the-USA, and organic company. So if you're interested in either the mineral deodorant or the detoxifying pit mask, click the link in the show notes and check out other Earthly wellness products while you're there. Yes, the link does help support our family. Earthly is generous enough to give a small percentage back to us if you use our link, but I would not be endorsing them if I didn't truly believe in their products. Yeah, and I think that one of the things that we, one of our one of our values, I think that kind of drives a lot of our decisions on we're too busy or, or yeah, we can do something else is just the table and what we, how we believe the table is just such an important part of, of a healthy family culture. And, and it's something that we value to the extent of we want to have family dinners as together at our table on a regular basis and that doesn't mean that it doesn't count if somebody else is joining us like that's great that's a way that we can um, include other people in our lives so I'm not saying we're eating dinner together every night by ourselves, and that's what we value because Mm -hmm. that's not what I mean at all but it's just like that that um uninterrupted time of just sharing a meal together is something that we value so when we notice like yeah we have stuff on this night and this night and then now we've got a meeting can we can we schedule something else in well no we don't really want to miss another meal with our kids like we've already got good things happening throughout the week but we said we value the table Mm -hmm. so we're gonna we're gonna do that after dinner or we're not gonna do that this week and just I think the reason why we value the table so much is just like I said that it's just a time to talk to your kids to to get to know them um when you have teenagers to you they're used to having dinner with you every night or however many nights a week so it's not like weird to say hey can you stay home and eat dinner tonight like it's just the expectation of we're going to catch up. How was your week? How was work today? How was mm-hmm. school? How was whatever? Um, and, and just developing that culture of this is a normal thing. We're going to eat dinner together and we're going to have conversation together around the table on a regular basis. Yeah. And if we notice our schedule getting too busy, um, that that's not happening, then that's a major red flag for us of we, we're doing something out of whack because we're not doing something we, we said we value. Yeah. And I think for us, that that value, I mean, I think there's all kinds of um, statistics and things that, that show just, you know, families that spend that time together, that there is an impact, that there is a major impact on kids. And so that's um, just practically, I think there's, that's one of the reasons mm-hmm. why we value that. But for us, even, even more than that, we we felt like God was leading us and drawing us towards um, just this image of the table. And that, you know, when, when we started this podcast, we chose a verse about olive shoots. Your children will be like olive shoots around your table. Mm-hmm. And, um, and that image of our children uh, feasting at our table with us, it, it, it led us to uh, including homesteading and growing our own food and, and just the practical elements of the table, creating a meal with our children. But even more than that, just including them into our lives, sharing life together, laughing with each other, and making those memories around, hey, this is a place in our home that we're going to gather together, maybe not every night, maybe not even most nights of the week, but we're going to we're going to spend intentional time with each other, and we're going to make a point that, that this is something that we want for our family, that we want to invest in. But what I'm getting at is that we, that, that was kind of um, something that God put on our hearts, that God gave us this vision of, and, and not just us, it's a lot of families, but gave us this vision of, of what we wanted our family to value and appreciate. And it came from God. It came from God saying, 
this is this is something that should be important for y'all. So the difference between busyness that leads to draining versus busyness that leads to blessing is that when your bless when your busyness is in obedience to what the Lord is calling you to when it's in obedience to what God has placed on your heart and you are following through with where he has called you and and how he has sh- told you and and shared with you how to lead your children, how to lead your family, then the abundance of blessing in your life far outweighs the energy, the time, the resources that are spent in doing whatever is keeping you busy. Yeah, I think that like just evaluating that, I mean, we kind of talked about earlier, like when you realize you're too busy, having that heart check, but then even more than that how do you how do you prevent that from happening or maybe how do we know what kind of busyness god wants for Mm -hmm. our family because what what we're doing right now might not be it's not even my it's for sure not going to be exactly like somebody else that's also following jesus and and leading their family in the right way like we're not going to all look the same um so i think just that like what you just said praying um, and, and figuring out what does it look like for you to be obedient to Jesus in this, with your busyness, with the things you're saying yes to. And and I, it sounds weird sometimes, like asking for permission, but how often do we, I mean, that's what we should do. How often do we sit down and say, we have another opportunity to involve our kids in something, or we have another opportunity to be on a uh, serve team at church should we do this? Well, let's pray about it together and, and see if it's something God wants us to do. Because instead of saying, well, it's serving at church, obviously it's what we should do. Like maybe, but maybe it's not what God wants our family mm-hmm. to do at this moment. Mm-hmm. Right. And so I think like the practical and just almost way dumbed down Christian answer is pray about it. But I don't know how, how often we do that as a first resort. Yeah. And then, like we've talked about over and over, just nailing down your family mission through prayer, through conversation with your spouse, and then having that help guide your decisions. And I know we've talked about that a lot over several podcasts. I don't know when there will come a time where we won't. Probably not, because it it's kind of how we make decisions in a lot of different areas. Mm-hmm. We kind of fall back on that. But... Nailing that down and figuring out what are your non-negotiables. Kind of like what I just said for us. One of them is the table. It's kind of a non-negotiable. So what are your non-negotiables? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then it just becomes a matter of saying, does this thing that we think is good, um, this class or this sport or this thing or whatever it is, um, does does it align Does it contribute? Does it move us towards the end goal of what we're trying to accomplish with our family? 50 years down the road, we want our family to look like this and be doing these things. Does does involving ourselves in this get us closer to that? Or does it distract us away from the goal that that God is calling us towards? Um, Yeah, and even does, does doing this thing or living life in this way, is it something we want our kids to learn? Is it, is it a daily rhythm that we hope they carry on or is it something we would hope they don't carry on? Because I think if, if, our, if our answer is we probably hope they don't, then it's probably not the best thing for us to be doing either. Like if it's not something we want them to do. And then, I mean, we kind of said this at the beginning, I think also, if, if our culture praises busyness so much and, and we're called to not fit in with the world, then we should we be praising busyness as followers of Christ? Should we feel like we have to say yes to everything? Yeah. And probably not. Yeah, yeah, probably not. You know, and I think a lot of <clears throat> a lot of parents, if if you're listening to this and and you have been feeling that, you feel just as we've been talking throughout this whole episode, you feel like. I don't know, maybe, maybe conviction, maybe conviction is too strong of a word. Maybe it's just like (laughs) pressure. (laughs) 
Not just that we don't like it, but maybe it's just a pressure of like, man, I, I know, I understand that I'm too busy, but I don't know what to do about it. We're too far in. How do we, how do we stop what we've been doing? We've already been doing this thing for five years and they're invested in it. How do we, how do we backtrack now and say, no, we're doing too much. Mm. You can't give, you can't give this thing up. And for any parents that are feeling that or any, anyone that's thinking about that, um, I would, I would just encourage you uh, to say that it's not too late to have those conversations and to include your children in on those conversations. Because I I think, and and Brittany and I have talked about this a little bit and and agree on it, that we think the enemy is very much so at work. Um, He is trying to kill, steal, and destroy. And that one of his his favorite targets is the family Mm -hmm. and um in our culture right now we've talked about our culture celebrates busyness um and if busyness is a is an avenue that the enemy can use to disrupt family relationships to make it more difficult to connect with your children to make it harder to spend the time energy and resources needed um, to have quality time with them and and to know their hearts, to know what God is calling them to and leading them towards and encouraging them in that. And even to like confuse them on what's the most important thing at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Then then if, if we recognize that your kids are not off limits towards the, it's for the enemy that he is he's going after them that those kind of conversations um it, it changes the perspective on how we have those conversations then maybe it's not so much hey kids i i think we're too busy we need to cut back we're, we don't have enough time anymore it becomes a conversation of hey i want to know your heart I want to know who you are, and I want to be the best leader and the best mother or father that I can possibly be to you, because I know there is an enemy out there who is coming for you, and it is my job to protect you and be the gatekeeper for that. And because of that, I think it's difficult for us to do that, for me to do my job of doing that, because we're just, we don't have we don't have enough time. We don't have uh, enough energy in the week. And maybe we need to cut back on some things so that we can focus on what Jesus is calling us to. And so that I can better point us in, in, in what he wants us to do. Mm-hmm. Or, or maybe it's even just a refocusing and a reshifting of the things that you're already doing where maybe your, your kid is involved in, in sports and he's on a sports team maybe you begin reframing instead of just going to practice, just learning a new skill, just learning how to dribble the ball better or whatever that might be. Instead, you begin to reframe that as, all right, I want you to go talk to one kid you don't normally talk to. Ask him how his day is going. Ask him how his week is going and challenge him or challenge your your child to make that his mission field, to encourage him to to make it more than just um, more than just a sport, but drive him and give him the or her. Sorry, <laughs> I, I'm picturing Emerson when I say this. To to give them the vision of that long term goal of well done, my good and faithful servant, and, and and putting that in their lap of like, hey. We're busy. We're committed to these things. We're not getting out of them. But instead of just viewing that as a time sink and a time waste or or maybe time lost throughout the week where we just can't get back, instead we're going to view it as God has called us to this place and this time and these people, and this is your opportunity. Yeah, and I think that maybe to tag along with that, it's you as parents are, are going to become more involved or us as parents are going to choose to become more involved in in our kids practice if we're dropping off our kid at 
t-ball practice or you know before organized school sports where you're not allowed to be involved like you viewing that as your mission field too hanging out watching the practice talking to other parents and it becomes a family um mission goal together Mm -hmm. while you're at the ball field um with your kids and it's not just dropping them off You're, you're engaging in that thing that they enjoy and and you're also making it have eternal impact at the same time mm-hmm. and i think that that plays a big part in in not feeling like it's just a waste of time yeah and then i think as parents especially just remembering that our our biggest mission field is our family and we're responsible for that our biggest mission field is our kids and sending them out and that's not to say that you're supposed to just stay home and only be missionaries to your kids and never uh minister to the world around i don't mean that at all but if if we're so busy and so focused on everything outside of the home that that we're missing out on on the mission that is raising our kids then we're we're missing out on our biggest mission field and we're we're not preparing them to be sent out to have that generational impact yeah so it all takes intentionality it all takes taking a step back and um and examining what am i doing that is distracting me from the end goal from the the eternal that god has placed us to do here on earth what what's distracting me from that and is there a way that i can shift it and change it to become eternal or do i just need to cut it out altogether Mm-hmm. And then what are the things that are driving me towards that end goal and lean into them? And when we when we think about busyness, busyness in and of itself, it's not the goal. Obedience to the Father is the goal. And doing the things that he has called us to do is the goal. So let's walk in those. Let's pause as leaders of our home as fathers and mothers leading our children, training them up in the way that they should go. Let's examine what truly matters and present the vision to our kids of, hey, I know you really love doing this thing, but God is calling us here. God is moving us this way and sharing that with them. I know it's not easy. I know it takes a lot of hard work and a lot of energy, and a lot of thought, a lot of prayer, and pausing, and waiting, and listening, but it's a good thing. And I think we've experienced it lately in the season that we're in, that busyness doesn't have to be draining. Busyness can be a blessing, and it can it can move you towards what Jesus is calling you towards. So we just want to thank you guys for listening. Um, Know that we pray for you. We pray for uh, just the listeners, for our our community. And um, we just thank you guys so much. If if this podcast, if you've enjoyed it, if you like listening to it, one of the things that will help us most, more than anything else, uh, is just sharing it. Sharing it with your friends and family um, and, and, uh, and giving us a rating. That helps us boost uh, our stats, boost our position up in uh, podcasting platforms. So doing those two things helps us to get the word out. So we really appreciate when people do that for us. Um, And we love hearing from you guys. So uh, whenever you message us or connect with us, we, we just love hearing those stories. We love hearing what God has been sharing with you. Um, through the podcast and uh, just love just love hearing from our listeners so we appreciate you guys we thank y'all and uh, we just pray that um, that God would be giving you the vision for your family leading you towards that goal and that you would be working well uh, filled and pointed to the places he's leading see you next week Thank you.